Alright, hello, lads and lasses, and welcome back to Boys Down Under, where when will the SBFL learn? Seriously, this, ladies and gentlemen, this deal is no good at all, and it isn't the way forward either. You know, not to mention the Im impending injury crisis that could go on at Celtic, but more on that later. Before we go any further, if you guys are enjoying the content and you want to help support the channel, the very best way to do so is to click that like button and click that subscribe button. But without further ado, let's get into it. So, after a, a bit of an apparent crisis uh, with the impending Sky Sports SBFL deal where a couple clubs weren't willing to go into it, the league has secured a majority 11-1 to 1 a majority of 11 to 1 for a proposed deal to commence at the beginning of the 2024 25 season. Now, the logistics of the deal, which really is all us fans care about, is how many times we can see Celtic play. Well, under the current plan, 48 games are required to be shown by Sky during the course of a season. From the 2024 25 season, this is going to bump up to 60. That deal will last till 2028-29, where Sky will have the opportunity to further extend their package to a, for, of course, more money, but they will see an increase to 80 games a season of the SBFL. That's a, to that's a total of 60 games, pretty much, to start with, out of 228 possible games. Now, you may go, Aiden, 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 Aiden. How is this bad for the fans? We're getting more. And more is obviously better. Well, that is true. However, here's the thing. Now, I am, I'm of course, speaking from an Australian perspective. And um, Australia here, we have a streaming service by the name of Optus Sport. Now, they have the right to the Premier League and La Liga. Now, the thing is, they don't show a select few games. They show every single game all season long. Every single Premier League game live and on demand. Every single La Liga game live and on demand. The... Who else? They've got the Japanese league as well, but those are the two big heavy hitters. Now, obviously this isn't the SPFL, but I know for a fact in England that not every single Premier League game is shown live on Sky Sports. I know that as a fact, right? But back to this deal, it commences in the 2024-25 season. So that is two years away, just under. So why was it so necessary to get this deal done urgently right now you know we have two scottish teams in the champions league we have a third scottish team in the conference league you know there is an ever-growing demand to see celtic play you know dare i say it people want to see rangers play you know to see Hearts, the edinburgh derby people want to see their teams in action but so do neutral fans now i can definitely say with a hundred percent certainty that down here in australia there, people want to see Ange, people want to see Celtic, but they're much more likely to see Celtic and Ange if it is accessible, live, and on the telly, right? And this is for non-Celtic fans. If they see it, it's on the schedule, they'll go watch it. Now, I've got to mention, here in Australia, all the games we get broadcasted live on TV are the equivalent Sky sports fixture. So if they're shown on Sky, they're shown here in Australia through a different provider. Exactly, and that's my point. So not every single Celtic game is shown here live in Australia. So when they are, there is a demand. There, there, a, a lot of people, my mates especially, are more inclined to watch Celtic when they can just go turn on, you know, KO Sports, Fox Sports, Be In, whatever, and go watch the game rather than having to sit down, find an illegal stream and go watch it there. You know, and while it is an increase in fixtures shown on Sky Sports, you know, always that's a positive, Celtic games still aren't shown every week, nor are any of the teams really. They, they alternate and... I hate to see that because illegal streams here for me in Australia, you know, while they're handy, it's just like, they're just not as good, you know? It's just the quality. If you're going to watch Celtic, you've got to watch them in high quality because the football they put on the field is high quality, you know? And while I may sound annoying, nagging on for no particular reason, you know, I feel the SPFL have really, really rushed to a decision here without really, with, with taking a minuscule, really, really minuscule uh, influence from the fans, if anything at all. 
You know, if they had just waited one season, right, I would almost, I could guarantee that another service provider, maybe not as lucrative as, as Sky Sports, but certainly with some cash to spend, would certainly come in. They'd want to show every single game live and on demand and provide just so much better service than Sky Sports do. You know, maybe I'm being too picky. Maybe this is... Maybe you guys are just watching me saying, Aiden, like, this is really a little thing you're picking on here, but it's the little things that matter, right? And for me, it isn't little because I want to watch Celtic play, and I know you guys in Scotland want to watch Celtic play, and you don't want to have to stream it illegally every other week. And also, for Celtic, not every fan can get to the game each week, so... While, you know, it may be seen as a way to improve ticket sales, Celtic don't need to improve ticket sales. We're literally, the study just came out today, 13th highest attendance in all of Europe. It's ridiculous, right? So, I just think, bottom line, is that SBFL have rushed to, de rushed to a decision. They've gone for the money. They've gone for security rather than for the fans, which football is all about. Now... To continue on the sour note, injuries on international duty are hitting an all-time high. They suck, right? Lads are dropping like flies, and they're not even dropping like flies in a Celtic jersey. They're in their own home nation country uh, colours, you know? First, we had Leo Labada go down, right? And Georges Jacomarcus, but most re David Turnbull even. But most recently, it has been two left foot dies. Dies in Mida. I won't put a cheeky dig, dig in here. Anyways, he has reported to have had a knock to his leg, has been pulled from training, pulled from action, and it looks like Dyson might be out for a couple of weeks, you know. So too Lee Alabada, who ha he had reportedly been brought out of the playing squad as well. So that's bad news, right? No one likes that. That is bad news. You know, even if you know Dyson Mida is even in a bit of a rough patch, it's still bad news. But there is always light when there is darkness. And some positive news that I know you will all be happy about. Georges Jacomarcus received a scan regarding his uh, suspected injury. But the Greek manager confirmed that it is nothing serious. And he is actually in contention to play against Northern Ireland. So really positive thing there for, for GG and for the Celtic, for us fans. You know, we will await more news on Dyson and Liel to the extent of their suspected knocks. But fingers crossed for their sake and our sake, they are okay. You know, like I said, even if Dyson is in a bit of a rough patch, we still need depth. Because while I think the way to go right now, as for a wing partnership, does look like Jota and Sed Haksabanovic. Also, Leo Labada is certainly right up there in that conversation. Dyson Mida, he needs to find some form because he has fallen down the pecking order in my eyes. Haksabanovic, I think we can see him really, really come into his own right now for Celtic. I think he's got a case for himself, but that is all from me. So if you guys did enjoy the video and you want to help support the channel, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave in the comments below your thoughts on this new TV deal with Sky Sports. What are your thoughts on it? Also the injuries. I think I've heard a bit about the injuries already, so mainly the Sky Sports stuff. But until next time, hail, hail.